All right, Aiden, you got to be a Cub fan, aren't you? Or Sox fan? I, uh, I grew up a, like, probably biggest Sox fan. Um, I remember I used to be Scotty Potsenik for basically every Halloween from I was like four <laughs> to ten. So, yeah, even on days that weren't Halloween, I would dress up in the Sox gear. So I grew up a huge Sox fan when they won the series in 05. It was like one of the best days of my life. And then since then, kind of changed over to the north side, more of a Cub fan. Now. What made you change? Uh, kind of my family. I, and I, baseball used to be a, a big sport for me and stopped watching, stopped playing. So um, I say I'm a Cub fan. I don't, I don't follow it as, as much. But just the thrill of playing a football game in Wrigley Field and a place that you, you obviously know very well. Yep. Just what, kind of, what kind of day will Saturday be for you in, in that regard? Yeah, I think even guys who didn't grow up near the Chicago area and um, that are just going there for the first time to play in the baseball stadium is pretty unique. And then, yeah, obviously a uh, place kind of where I'm from, the, being a, a historic stadium like that is going to be pretty cool. So I'm excited. It'll be uh, hopefully a great day for us. How much family will be there for you? A lot, a lot, yeah. Immediate family, extended family, a lot of friends too. So um, it'll be kind of like last time we played at um, mm -hmm. we played at Ryan Field Northwestern. Had a lot of family, so it'd probably be around. Maybe not that much, but around the same. When you when you got here as a walk on, you know Brian was telling the story that you know you went to work immediately. It kept working. It kept working, even though there was really no hope at that point that you would even get a first team rep in practice. Why did you? Why did you do it that way? Um, I think it, I mean, I, I love the game. So I knew um, if, if nothing else, I'm, you know, working on skills that are going to help after football. I'm working on being a hard worker, being disciplined, um, you know, staying after doing those things. And um, I also, it wasn't like a burden. I enjoy doing those things. So I think it's uh, just kind of my personality. I'm a little more probably independent and like being uh, kind of on my own sometimes. So after practice a lot was a lot of time to be on my own and just think about stuff and obviously play, get to throw a little more football. And yeah, like you said, I didn't get a lot of reps back in the day. So I didn't get, I didn't really get to practice during practice. So I had to practice mm -hmm. after practice. So, yeah. When you were sitting around thinking about stuff, I mean, did being the number one quarterback at Purdue enter your mind or was that maybe a motivation that you wanted to get to that point at some, at some point in your career here? Definitely a motivation, definitely something I hope for. Um, I'm not going to say I, I knew definitely that I, it was going to happen, um, but I, I always thought if, if I got a, a shot, I was just going to work as hard as I can and try to put myself in a good spot. But also, a lot of stuff, you know, God's providence had to happen for me to get there. If a lot of guys, unfortunately for a lot of guys, don't get hurt. Like that, that one year, mm -hmm. Elijah, Nick Seip, Plummer don't get, don't get hurt. Um, and it's unfortunate for those guys, I never would really get a shot in the first place. So. Um, I can't sit here and take credit for it. There's a lot of stuff outside of my control that had to happen. And now, if I remember right, did you had an offer from Wheaton College. Did you have any other options at all? Um, I had a, a couple more Division three opportunities, um, but Purdue was my only um, Power 5 walk-on opportunity. Um, I had an offer from Cornell as well. Um, that was in the Ivy League, but no scholarship offers, unfortunately. Yeah. So Purdue was my only, really my only big opportunity. Illinois didn't sniff around at all? Uh, no, no, I talked to them a little bit, but nope. And I think you said you came here too because you wanted to be a coach and just kind of soak everything in too, right? Yeah, yeah, I, th I knew, you know, I wanted to be a coach and I knew um, to, uh, I needed to be in a locker room like this and um, understand how, how the game is played at this level and coached at this level. And Brian said you developed a relationship with David Blau. Is that ongoing? You still talk? Yeah, yeah, I actually te was texting with him yesterday. Um, a guy who probably more off the field than on the field kind of took me under his wing. And obviously you guys know a great guy who um, just cared about me. And, you know, I was seventh or eighth on a depth chart when he, you know, wanted to be my friend and talk to me. So he, he didn't care about the football aspect of it. And I think that's still true today. Did you know when you got here the type of quarterback room you were walking into with David and Elijah and uh, and all those guys, I mean, did you have an idea or how quickly did you learn yeah. the, the level of quarterbacking that was going on, not just on the field? Yeah, I, I didn't really. <laughs> it could be, because Purdue was my only opportunity, I kind of was just like, I'm just going to go give it a shot and see what happens. And um, So I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I kind of came here really just to play football, and the cool part was everything off the field that happened, the relationships I made with Elijah and David and then even some of the other quarterbacks. Um, from the years past, so that's that's the stuff I'm gonna remember the most is the, the relationships. Did you ever get discouraged, Aiden, and just want to leave? Um, I definitely was discouraged and and thought about it. Um, there was some you know some lonely times of you know just 
like you said, you don't know what's going to happen. The, the future is up in the air. It still is, but um, it, it definitely was back then. So uh, there was times I thought about it, but um, like I said, there was just stuff off the field. You know, I'm part of FCA here and um, just people around that cared about me. Like I said with Davey, just cared about me despite football. And so having those relationships um, made it a, a lot easier to be here. And uh, I got to the point where I was still fifth or sixth on the depth chart and I looked around, I'm like, I could, I could see myself staying here even if I never play. So um, I think that, that helped me a lot. How satisfying has this journey been for you given all the obstacles that you've had to overcome just to, to get in a position to take a first team rep in, in practice? Yeah. You know, I, I try not to be too nostalgic right now because I'm still in it and I want to focus. Um, but at the same time, I want to, you know, um, be joyful of, you know, how far I've been able to come. And like, I say me, but it's really, like I said, it's just God being gracious to me. It's stuff that just, um, it's, again, the story doesn't happen um, because I worked hard or anything like that. It happened because other things out of my control happened. So I can't take credit for it, but it, it's been amazing to just watch it kind of unfold and um, hopefully it, um, continues on a high note. You can't take credit for it, but you can take advantage of it, right? That's true. That's true. Exactly. So I'm, I'm definitely thankful for it. Yeah. I know you still got football to play here, Aiden, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you, uh, have you given any thought to coming back in 2022? I've thought, of, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I've thought about it. And it's, I want to, you know, I just want to focus on this season. Um, we're never going to have this exact team again. Mm -hmm. So I want to focus on the guys uh, winning football games and just, you know, being in the locker room and things like that. It's the opportunity now that's ahead of this team to, uh, you know, to, to finish the season out on a strong note and then at least get some momentum going into whatever bowl game you go to. Yeah, yeah I think we, we, we have a chance at a special season still and um, have wanted to win some games that we've unfortunately lost, but also have had some big wins this year. So I think, you know, this is going to be a huge week, a huge test for our team coming off a tough loss. and. Um, we're just going to take this week and see what happens after that. But this would be a huge win for our program. How do you handle all the attention, like nationally, when you're on you're on game day and you're you know you're getting that kind of uh, pub for yourself? It's fine. I don't I don't have any social media, so I don't I don't see any of it. So um, I know it goes on, but I just remove myself from it completely. So it's almost like it's it's not going on for me. And again, when I'm done with my career I'd, I'll be able to look back on that stuff but right now I want to I want to focus on the moment how hard is it not to be on social media for a college kid uh it was <laughs> it was kind of an adjust I started the years back so I started before I even got to college um but now it's it's it would be weird for me to get on social media I, I'm so far removed from it that it would be um yeah I don't I don't want it or anything like that so I'm I'm I, I like where I'm at <laughs>